All right, here we are again. John Reed and Brian Summer, Sage and Tact Advantage 2018. We are at Brian's favorite hotel in the continental United States. Oh, yeah. We are at the Gaylord, Brian. Oh, God, <laughs> the biodome of hotels. Where's Polly Shore, man? Oh, he would so fit in. That's all you need to add to the country western kitsch and the... <laughs> Closed in glass dome, the fake canal ride, the radio station in the hotel, the walks of eternal you know, strides to get from one meeting to the next. Yeah, it's everything I love in a hotel and more. You know, it's funny because uh, I actually kind of like the Gaylord. I mean, it's a strong word to use. I was just telling you yesterday that compared to the Disney Swan and uh, Dolphin, I will take the Gaylord any day. But that that's a debate we're going to have to have on another podcast because we got to get to the matter at hand. real news for today. we got to get to the matter at hand. So Sage and Tech Advantage 2018 is an interesting show because we're, it was last year they were hot on the heels of being acquired by Sage. You know, for those of us who were passionate about the possibilities with Intact as a CFO-focused, multi-tenant, cloud financial solution, there were some shockwaves about being acquired by Sage, which is not a company you would quickly associate with multi-tenancy and financial transformation and modern software. So there was a bit of a shocker there. And yeah, now yeah. now we're a little more than a year in. So Yeah, and what actually added even more kind of gravitas to the implications of the deal was that NetSuite had been gobbled up by Oracle. Right. And uh, that took out two big multi-tenant mid-market providers of capability here. And uh, that that caused customers on both sides to kind of go, what happened here? And um, now one of my old clients, selection client, they're here, and they had chosen actually Intact over NetSuite, and they're still very happy with that decision. Um, the... But, I mean, the gist of the question here, I think, in hand is there was a material change of control. How did everyone fare on this thing? And if we're kind of giving out a scorecard, I'd have to say, first of all, kudos to Sage for not getting in there and messing the deal up. Yeah. If I, it look, you know, Aaron's still here. Uh, Rob uh, CTO, still, yeah, yeah, yeah. Rob Reed, CEO, is still here. Yeah, they're still here, and the, the you know there's lots of customer love going on and all that kind of stuff. So they've left them somewhat alone, and that's a great thing. Yeah. Uh, I was at a Sage Analyst event in Boston a few weeks ago, and uh, you know we talked about some of the other synergies from their other acquisition of FairSale, an HR HCM vendor, and. Uh, it's clear these two product lines, Sage Management correctly figured out that this is where the future is. It's with these multi-tenant kind of products, and they don't want to mess it up. Yeah. And, you know, the one thing I will say, you know, I, I tend to be skeptical of these things, you know, because I like independent players, but I, I do understand also there is impact in in having the funding and backing Rob Reed today, when I talked to him about this, he really emphasized the international capabilities. Mm -hmm. um, he said that going international is harder than actually building a startup. And he's done it a few times. And, and so his feeling is they're going to really, say, just going to really help on that front. But the thing that I found most, like, positive for my, and I, like I said, I'm skeptical about this stuff, but uh, a number of customers tell me the pace of innovation from Intact has increased since the acquisition. Yeah, I was, I got to tell you, I was expecting um, some of the usual post MA slowdowns. Uh, you sometimes see a lot of the key people bolt and leave. You see uh, companies want to go meditate for months about, well, what should the new product roadmap look like post merger? None of that's been going on. In fact, uh, they've been charging hard straight ahead on some of the original product roadmap stuff. And I think that gets into, I think, probably one of the most important next pieces, which is they did make a lot of progress on some critical functionality areas. Yeah, yeah. So let's get into that. I think the the where I'm going to just park the Sage thing for now is just to say I, I do think we have to keep an eye on it because there has been a fair amount of leadership upheaval in the parent company. 
uh, with Stephen Kelly's surprise departure. Oh. Den Hallett wrote an extensive piece on Digitonomica on this topic, and you also touched on it in one of your monthly reviews. Yeah. And, you know, I, I think it will be important to see what Sage does with their leadership going forward, and we can't speak to that right now because it's in flux. Um, you know, but uh, I asked Rob Reed today, I said, Rob, you know, several people have told me that you might be a good guy for that job. Um, do you care to comment on that? And uh, Rob didn't care to comment on that, as can be expected. No. <laughs> but he, you know, he is actually a very solid... Uh, and he is on the executive advisor. He's right. on the executive board of Sage now, so... Well, I hear you know, Thomas Curian might be looking for something. Yeah, Kurt, Thomas Curian, formerly of Oracle, has some time on his hands. Yeah, he might. So anyway, that's something we just yeah. have to keep an eye on for the future. Yeah, I, I, would, I would agree. And uh, uh, I just... I got to say, the overall feeling I've gotten from the last several encounters with the Sage Intact folks is they realize they got a great asset, and they're they're not doing stupid things right now. But I would agree, it's the they're at the Sage Group PLC corporate you know umbrella deal. That's where you know we got to kind of watch to make yep. sure nothing boneheaded comes out of there. Exactly. Anyway, so All back right. on back on with Intact. Yeah. Um, what did you see from kind of a, uh, a product announcement side? Well, I'd say I, I love to actually crash some of the meetings that the analyst relations people try to keep us out of. So yeah, uh, yeah. I went to one uh, this morning that was a standing room only deal uh, for their new budgeting and planning talk. Now, mm -hmm. first of all, that tells you, one, boy, there's a lot of interest in this thing and that, that they could pack that building, you know, so full of folks who wanted to hear about it. Number two is that uh, uh, while companies like Adaptive were here at the show uh, right. as well, and I, one of my clients has both Intact and Adaptive as their combination, a lot of people would like their budgeting and planning tool as, a, you know, as an embedded piece of the uh, core right. financials. Um, and this was announced, as, it was one of the major product announcements, and it's, it is available as of now. So it's a beta least, right, right. Now. And yeah, 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 they're over. But you can't get it. Yeah, yeah. You, you, well, you'd want to check that out with your yeah, yeah, intact yeah. rep. My understanding is it's in beta. It's heavily oversubscribed. That's how. Again, another indicator of just how popular and yeah, how, yeah. how much demand there is for this. And uh, I mean, if you want, how, you know, some of the things I saw in there were quite interesting. Um, first thing I, I'm going to point out at the macro level. This is a product that I would have expected for a beta version of a product to be pretty threadbare on functionality and capability. That's usually the MO of a lot of software companies, and quite honestly, this product was quite a bit more sophisticated than that. And the depth of integration in with the financials was, um, wasn't was integrated in the, you know, we pass files back and forth. It's, it's exceptionally tight. Um, so much so that when the uh, demo person was answering some questions from the audience, she could actually not only show you the answer to that question, but she showed you like all the follow-on accounting stuff that was being generated in the background to further, uh, you know, you know, collapse. I guess the integration challenges. And as a result, she got lots of applause uh, uh, throughout the whole deal this morning because people really liked what they saw. Um, I'd also tell you that. Um, for targeting purposes, this product's going to be really sold, and I think Intec would like it to initially be sold to the small and the lower end of the bid market. The larger enterprises, they're not steering them to this product just yet. And, you know, that you can read into that what you want, but I think they, I think um, Intec's probably already looking to add additional capabilities that are going to make it more valuable still for the larger enterprises. So I don't think if I were running one, if I were one of their bigger customers, I think I'd take more of a wait and see approach. Mm -hmm. There are some things, you know, other products in the market, standalone products, the Anaplans, Adaptives, and the like. Anaplan does a great job with pulling in very focused operational data in with the planning process. And I'm not sure this product's quite up to that kind of a capability yet. But for the first shot right out of the block, that was an impressive demo and a lot of really good stuff to see. Well, and I couldn't help but but when I pass the adaptive booth on the floor and think about this announcement, think about how 
intact, probably a little more comfortable with their own offering here. Uh, you know, Workday is pretty aggressive, and Land and Expand mm-hmm. is something they're kind of familiar with. And I, I talked with an intact person last night who said to me, like, they admitted, like, look, we're not entirely comfortable right now. You know, they, they have run into Workday in some situations, and, you know, we're not entirely comfortable with, like, ceding the planning territory to Adaptive, and now they don't have to. They can offer it. Now, it doesn't mean they're not going to have Adaptive as a partner. They're still going to have that, of course, but mm-hmm. you can understand from their rationale why they don't want to cede that, because uh, that does give Workday a leg up to start, hey, and hey, by the way, we also have a pretty spiffy financials product and so on. Yeah. You know? uh, now, this product, that just to be clear, this new application from uh, Intact is a budgeting and planning product. Right. It, they they already have some consolidation in all the yeah, financial yeah, yeah. and the financials. But if you've re- if you're a, a very complicated, complex uh, firm, you're probably going to want a more brute force, heavy duty kind of yeah. product. And you will probably be looking at whether it's an adaptive an amplifier yeah, or something yeah. like that. Now your point about uh, for the listeners who didn't read the press release, uh, Adaptive was acquired by Workday, and that's why you're yeah. referring to them. And uh, and at a pretty penny, I think it was $1.55 yeah. billion dollars for that deal. I like, I, I genuinely like the people at Adaptive, and um, it's going to be fascinating to watch how how and if and how well uh, Workday is going to cross-sell into Adaptive's install base and vice versa, because they kind of serve a little bit different markets yep. there. Anyway, we're getting off track from the yeah, intact, yeah, end, yeah. but all this is kind of tied up into cool stuff around the financial software space. Yeah. What else did you see from the announcements? Um, well, I didn't get a chance to get in and see it, and, and this is sort of speculative here, but uh, I, I hear lots of good things on the bank reconciliation functionality that was updated. Uh, and again, one of my, uh, uh, an old uh, client actually confirmed that as well from what they've uh, seen and dealt with. Um, I don't know. Did you get a chance to look at that one at all? I didn't look at that one as much. I was looking, I looked at some of the general ledger allocations announcement. Um, you know, basically they're just trying to make the closing process uh, even more efficient there with complex closes and has to do with things like allocation of indirect revenue and, and costs. Um, basically it's it's candy for CFOs, right? I mean, yeah. uh, that this is what, you know, Intact, like more than any other ERP product, I think, has engaged like the passion of the CFOs that 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 are here. And and so they, they throw these guys bones constantly. And 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 for a lot of CFOs, like, you know, yeah, AI and mach- machine learning and stuff, that's super interesting. But this kind of stuff, reconciliation, this allocation, is stuff, this, this is, is stuff the stuff that, they can immediately put to use. Yeah, this is the know. stuff that is a time sink for accountants yep. and accounting staffs, if you know what all you know, like any CFO worth their salt is actually vying for the big chair someday. They want to be a CEO. The right. last thing they want to be doing is still trying to figure out how can we shorten our close from ten days after the end of the month to seven or something. They'd like to get it down quite a bit less. One thing I want to say on the allocations, um, I know firsthand in the past. Allocations was a was a hole sort of in their product. They could do some minimal kind of app, uh, allocations, right. uh, but if you wanted something more robust, you had to use uh, a product out of their marketplace that was developed by a, a public accounting firm. And hopefully, this will be again a, an, an integral part of the product, and will, like you said, it, it'll hopefully make clients a whole lot happier. Yeah, the other thing that I think shocked some people during the keynote is Aaron went for a shock. Aaron Harris, the CTO, he went for a shock and awe slide for Financial Leadership 3.0, which says eliminate the close, continuous audit, and predictive analytics. And that's a little bit of a mind blow, even for the CFOs that are here. They're sitting here saying, wait, eliminate the close? For sure, man. Man, they were all like grooving on that, you know? But, but it is really interesting because it's like that's. That's the future that Intact is trying to bring about, and yeah. and that's what they want for to offer. Is they they want to take that, like you said, that non strategic workload, and they want to make it like minimal. I mean, they're you know the twenty percent max should be spent on these administrative accounting and a, activities. And a good example of that in that new budgeting piece, somebody asks a question, and the uh, demo person goes, 
Well, let me show you. You, you know, uh, the question was about uh, budgeting revenue. It goes, well, what if you have different kinds of revenue types? She goes, oh. And then she opens it up and she says, see, when you get to the line on revenue and the different kinds of revenue, you can then pick how that revenue comes about. So if it's subscription-based, a whole set of parameters show up that will then allow you to um, uh, build the budget with minimal human intervention. So, for example, it goes, okay, so it's subscription-based. We're going to get $12,000 cash. So on the cash set of books, on the cash flow budget, you can see the, you know, but it will show up 30 days after we start the service. Right. But then from a RevRec perspective, it shows the $1,000 a month you're going to earn on the subscription, but then it also shows the accruals that are going all along and the liability that goes with the undelivered piece of it uh, going forward. And it did all that automatically, and all the accountants just started applauding. Applauding. Saw that. Yeah, I mean, you're right. I mean, it was... It was the, uh, you know, that's the kind of, I don't know, the crack cocaine for that kind of crowd. Boy, they were just loving that kind of stuff because it just makes budgeting, it makes it less of a um, migraine headache uh, and more to just like uh, uh, something they got to do. All right. Yeah, and I, th I think the other really interesting thing from an intact perspective is I have this slide up here now. Um, that came up in the software keynote you and I were at. Order-centric financials don't scale in a subscription world. Uh, Order-centric financials were built to support product-centric models, not subscription businesses with long-term customer relationships. And I think that was especially big in the software keynote because obviously they're talking to a bunch of SaaS companies in that room. Mm -hmm. But in general, I, I think of Intact and, and Financial Force as two of the vendors that are kind of out in front in terms of like, how do we rethink how accounting works in a, in a subscription economy, right? And so that's the other big theme that I picked up on this year. Yeah, I mean, I mean I've been real close to the, all the RevRec and ASC 606 and IRFRS 16 and all that other kind of stuff. Yeah, you've been, been Mr. RevRec the last couple of years, yeah, man. Yeah, been, uh, been there, done it, don't want to talk about it anymore, but anyway. <laughs> all right, that's cool. But, but, yeah. but where I'm going with this is a lot of vendors came up with, like, templates and tools to help accounting departments meet the new regulatory requirements. But it was sort of like that's about as far as the thinking went in their companies. Uh, you know, they didn't realize that, and this is what I think separates some of the really best-run cloud um, SaaS companies from the, uh, you know, the folks who are kind of being drug into it, uh, no matter how much they're on-premise kind mm -hmm. of, you know, bloat stops him. For example, like Ceridian's David Osip, man, he is he 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 is so on target with a couple of things. For one, he won't charge a customer until they go live. Mm. I'm waiting to hear some of the old school guys who no, I need all my money up front. Yeah. And I don't care if you ever that would have get put this. some vendors out of business in the past, I would say. Oh yeah. But, and it's not just, because, it's not the cash flow aspect. It's the whole idea that yeah. you don't start earning the business till you actually deliver the service. Whereas the other guys are still thinking, Hey, I gave you access to the software. Give me my money. And, and the second thing also does is, um, he, he, you know, he really pounds on this. We have to earn the business every single, earn it back every single month. Yep. Now, I don't think I've ever run into an old mainstream ERP vendor who could even spell the word churn and never wanted to talk about it either. Yeah. Because they're, they were delighted to sell lots of spots, those software packages on the shelf, software that never got installed, but customers still stupidly paying maintenance on it. That was the old world, and that world is that world needs to go away. And this is going to be a big transition. I was at Oracle Open World this week, as Oracle really, really is switching over to being a real, you know, pure cloud kind of company with cloud apps and cloud um, platforms and and and. They may have to rethink about. Their business practices, their sales methods, their collection practices, and everything else. Because when you're going to when you're going to become that kind of a company where everything is based, mm. subscription based, you need to take all the friction out of the sales process. You got to quit jacking around with five thousand page contracts or whatever. You know, you've got to make you've got to make a major cultural shift in the company to make this fly. And so I applaud mm. the efforts of some of these companies who figured out that SaaS isn't just about a change in how you build customers. It's a change in how you 
fundamentally interact with your right. software customers. Yep. Okay. Do you have anything else? I have a couple quick things. Do you have anything you wanted to hit on? I'm good. Uh, I wanted to hit on the vertical announcements briefly because I do think that while Intact has done very well with its core financials, it needs to tie that into verticals to really be successful. This is, I, I just believe that the future of, of Cloud ERP is, is vertical in a lot of ways. And they had a number of announcements to sort of back up what they're trying to do there. Uh, one of it was enhanced revenue recognition. Again. For yeah. non nonprofits. Uh, and, you know, kind of helping nonprofits negotiate all the um, sort of legalistic stuff they got to do and all the grant requirement stuff. Then there's the intact billing workbench uh, for subscription businesses, then innovation for distributors and inventory-based companies. So, again, like trying to take that core and then push it out into these vertical segments, I think that's the win uh, for for not just for Intact, but for any player in the space, is to figure out how you're going to do that. So, to when they were pre-sage, if you will, not what a pun there, yeah, but, uh, not intended, um, yeah, but they were they were extraordinarily focused on serving the controller, the CFO, the financial accounting yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, part of an organization. Um, they did have some verticals, and I know you and I have talked about it. they had a big one, and not just not for profit, but it was even uh, in the faith based space. And right. a lot of that success there is driven by a major reseller of theirs called Act Two out of Houston. Right. Um, they I have, did a piece on them. Marcus Wagner runs that great, 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 great bootstrap story. He started with five people. Now he's got like a hundred consultants. Yeah, he's got he's got a lot of talent. Armanino is an accounting firm. It's also one of their top partners um, most years, and uh, Armanino has just been tearing up uh, as well. Uh, now, and I think the vertical deal, your uh, angle on this is correct. Vendors have to get more and more that way, more than anything else, because finance has to become more of a support organization for the operational side of it, and that's where right. the big data is. That's where all the sensor information, yeah. that's where the great forecasting, predictive maintenance, everything else is coming from, and that's what's really going to become uh, front and foremost in a lot of the dashboards that executives are going to want to see, and accounting needs solutions that are going to help populate that information. Yeah, and the final piece of that is is the platform play, because last a couple years ago I had a heck of a time finding any Intact partners who had built any functionality on, on the platform, any extensions, any industry specific stuff. Now that's starting to change. Um, last year, uh, Aaron Harris insisted to me that they had opened up the platform and I found some examples like, uh, Mark Swagner's company, for example, has built out some stuff there. They're looking into stuff for drilling actually and, and, and that industry. Um, I'm looking forward to talking to Marcus a little later today on what he's done there, but I was, um, we had dinner with um, some folks last night. Taylor uh, was oh, talking. Oh, McDonald. Yeah. He was talking about some of the extensions that folks have built on, and some of these aren't full-fledged verticals. But they, you know, for example, if you have uh, working with um, Native American reservations, you have casinos. You need some casino-based functionality. There's some mm-hmm. partners that have done some stuff there, uh, and and so like just looking at those kind of micro segments and starting to build out and. I think Harris said that they had about a thousand different extensions on the platform now. That don't quote me on that, even though I'm recording. <laughs> uh, but something like that. I'll, I'll, I have that exact number, so I'll I'll fix the recording if I'm wrong. But basically, they're starting to make that platform thing possible, which I think is the other piece of their equation. So that's the story I'll be tracking again next year. But it looks like they are making progress after somewhat of a slow start in that area. So, well, they can only. They can only move at that pre-sage. They can only move so far, so fast yeah. with the uh, people and capital resources they had. And you know, the headline on this one is: I think the gloves are off right now, and I think Sage wants to see these guys uh, really succeed. And back to the top of the recording, when you commented about the international angle, I really think that is going to be a that needs to become a major push of theirs because that's exactly right. what Oracle is doing with NetSuite. They right. are taking NetSuite all over the planet yep. Earth, and Sage needs to do that uh, with intact and fair sale. All right. To be continued. Thanks, Brian. I think I'll probably see you one more time in this nonstop fall season, so look forward to that. 
Yes, I'll see you in the Thunderdome. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> So our listeners can probably look forward to another hash out before we wrap this up for the year. Thanks. Take care.